Welcome to the Powered on Tech podcast with your host, Asher Dupree. Plug in and power up for today's hottest tech topics. Hey everyone, what is up? How's it going? Welcome to the Powered on Tech podcast. This is our ninth episode. That's right, episode nine. Episode, yeah, episode nine. My bad there. I'm not doing great with talking. And uh, yeah, there's been a nice gap since the last episode, which means that we have like a bunch of nice, rich, juicy stories that we could go over. And I'm also joined by my cousin and co-host, Joshua Fidel. How's it going, man? Oh, uh, so... Hello he, there. Yep. That's him. <laughs> um, he, he, he likes tech. I mean, he's pretty much the uh, largest guest. Not, not like not like in size like you're not physically bigger than the other guests but you're on the show pretty frequently um and hopefully we'll be able to do this more frequently because summer is coming up and we won't be in school so we could probably do this like every saturday maybe not but that that's what i'm gonna hope for so maybe keep your eye out for more frequent episodes of the Bard on tech podcast is there anything in specific you want to start with joe or should we just start with story and numero, numero uno, as John Prosser would say. No, there's nothing specific. Nothing? All right. So let's start here. This was yesterday, April 14th, and on 9to5Mac.com, Instagram announces new features to make Reels more attractive to creators. And um, for listeners out there, just so you know, uh, we haven't read these prior to reading them right now on the show so our reactions are going to be completely genuine i have no idea what instagram's plan is so let's get started (coughs) my bad instagram has been aggressively trying to compete with tiktok when it comes to short videos now the social network has announced multiple new features for its reels platform in an attempt to make it more attractive to creators so like what does that mean um in a blog post, it's now easier to find out what's trending on Reels. Creators will find a new section with top trending hashtags and songs so that they can create Reels about what other people really want to see. Whoa. Say that again? So that they can create Reels about what other people really want to see. These are the types of insights you can tap into with the new trends destination, Instagram explains. That's kind of confusing. Does that make any sense to you, Joe? So, oh, but at the same time, not really. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, Joe actually lives in the UK. He's in the UK right now, so his voice might sound a little bit different. Yeah, I live in London. Yeah, like, he's, like, on, like, a week-long vacation, so if his voice sounds a little bit British, that's probably why. Um... Well, I'm not really sure what that means, but if anyone wants to comment, um, I don't know if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever, or on like all the different platforms, I believe. Um, If anyone wants to comment or something and uh, summarize this, that would be helpful. I'm going to leave it up to y'all, because that's not making much sense to me. Um. Maybe it's just like a for you page, but for reels. Not, not quite sure about that. All right. Um, any thoughts on that, Joe, or should we move on? No, not really, because Instagram is not really my type of thing. Yeah, not really like, my type either. I use it, like I use it, but not often at all. I use it, but I wouldn't really care if it got deleted off the face of the earth compared to YouTube or Twitter where I probably would. Alright, so Ice Universe, um, common tech Twitter blogger, uh, he says, oh, by the way, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is the most eye-damaging screen among all brands of mobile phones. It's only PWM 240 hertz, which is lower than 480 hertz of the iPhone 14 Pro, and both are far inferior to Chinese mobile phones. <coughs> so, and then this is kind of confusing people. Like, how's it damaging because of the refresh rate? 
and he kind of summarized it and he said imagine that there's an electric fan in front of you when its speed is low enough you can see the blades of the fan turning one by one in front of your eyes your eyes will get tired but after its speed becomes faster you will not be able to see the fan blades eye comfort okay so that kind of makes sense so basically the higher the refresh rate the i guess that means that that means it makes your eyes more more comfortable does that it's make some sense super, it's some super suspicious malarkey okay well I guess that makes sense it's kind of funny and ironic though because Samsung always brags about like their refresh rate and how good their phones are for your eyes but in reality there's are the most most damaging. They're not good for your eyesight at all, mate. Just not even cool. They're lying. Yeah, mate. Definitely. So, mm. the 15 inch MacBook Air is fast approaching. So, I mean, what, Joe, just a question for you. What would you like to see on the next MacBook Air? Uh,. Probably a digital keyboard. That would be really awesome. A digital keyboard? Like if the keyboard. keyboard was like a screen. Like if the keyboard Why? was like a screen that projected the keys. But I don't know, imagine, that would really cool. But think about, like imagine gaming with that. ASDW on a digital keyboard and then your knuckles would be hitting all the buttons. Oh, I don't know, mate. Like that you, just you, seems really you cool. You have your iPad right now. Open up Spotlight. And then try laying the iPad down on the ground and typing like you would on a keyboard. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now, mate. Is it cool at all? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like <laughs> kind of satisfying. Okay. I would strongly disagree, but we all have our opinions, right? Or, or, or you know, it would be cool to see at least have a few digital buttons, like have the... Power bar. button digital. The yeah. power button. Why would you want the power yeah. button digital? I don't know. Just some cool uh, digital some buttons. Digital like, buttons. It would just make it so much cooler. I want to see Apple innovate, not just be the same each year, like they always saw. They rarely make any big changes. They made big changes with the butterfly keyboard, and everyone hated it. Like, I can see why. Like. Like, the biggest change they've made recently to any of the devices was the Dynamic Island on the iPhone 14 Pro. Yes. They could bring that but, to the Mac. That would be interesting. Yeah. You yeah, could, that would be pretty interesting. Imagine... But you know what? Hold up. They need to add, they need to add touch screen uh, to the Macs. Touch screen would be nice. The screens it's are so hard to they clean. Don't have that. Yeah. So, imagine the dynamic island on a Mac, though. Like, you could use your dock, and basically, whenever you hover your mouse over the dynamic island, it expands out into the Mac OS dock. That's actually really cool. Huh. Okay, well, this report comes from Bloomberg and Sites Developer Logs, which have leaked now that... Apple has started testing the new MacBook Air with third-party apps from the App Store to validate their compatibility. According to the report, the 15-inch MacBook has a screen resolution identical to the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which means it would run the same. Oh, it means it would would run the same resolution, but with slightly less sharpness. So basically, they took the same resolution from a smaller laptop and just upscaled it. So it's not gonna be as perfect and clear but <coughs> technically it's the same as my laptop the 14 inch macbook pro which is what i'm using right now the machine being tested has an eight core processor with four high core performance core high yeah, with four high performance cores and four efficiency cores whether it's the m2 chip pretty all right 
I mean, it's pretty alright. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Super... It's not the not the best. I it's believe... pretty average. Yeah, I think that's like one core each added um, compared to this year's MacBook Air. Whether it's the M2 chip in particular remains to be seen. Today's report simply says that the performance of the machine is on par with the current M2 chip. There's also still no word on when exactly Apple is planning to release this new 15-inch MacBook Air. Um, when would you say? Joe? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, when do you yes. think they would launch this MacBook? 20, 2026. Um. Okay. I don't know, I just wanted to give a round of day. Yeah, you did that. I meant, I know, like, I this did. year. I'm it's pretty sure it's talking about this year. Yeah, so, like, basically, Apple, Apple skipped the, the spring event. Yeah, why is that? That's pretty weird. Yeah, they've been doing, like, March, April events, right? But they... We haven't had any Apple events this year. And now we're going straight into WWDC, which is in, like, a few weeks. So, hopefully they'll launch a new VR headset there. Or at least some kind of physical product. You know what I would really like to see Apple do? Release a gaming console. That would be so, like, innovative for... Especially for Apple, because they make phones, MacBooks, obviously... And it would be really cool to see them get in the, into the gaming console market. Like? Like, like competing against PlayStation, uh, Microsoft, Xbox, And you could and get, Sony. like, Apple Arcade free with it? Yeah. That would, would it be the that same be really apps awesome. that are on iPhone and iPad? I don't know, but it would just be cool to see them release a console. I don't, I don't know what kind. Like, maybe a handheld console would be really cool. Like, kind of like the Nintendo Switch. But then, why not just make an accessory for the iPhone? That gives you the ability to, like, control it like a Switch. Yeah, but how would they do that? Like, magnets or something? Yeah, Probably magnets. Or with an iPad or just Bluetooth. I mean, the Bluetooth keyboards are really fast now. So, just a thought. Um, Apple's expected to use a new 3 nanometer fabrication process for at least some of the M3 chip variants. This will lead to a notable improvement in performance and efficiency. It's possible, however, that 3 nanometer tech may not be used in every version of the M3. Apple could, for instance, bifurcate the M3 lineup by using a 5 nanometer process for M3 in a 3 nanometer process for M3 Pro, M3 Max, and M3 Ultra. So, I'm not sure what the fabrication process is, but I'm guessing that's like the size of the machines that put the chips together. So you can make them more intricate and detailed and more compact the smaller you go. Compact. Mm, super suspicious spe- 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 monarchy. Yeah. Okay, let's go back up here to 9 to 5 Mac. So, let's talk about the iPhone 15 Pro rumors slash leaks. <coughs> Before we get Pro started... Pro Max Mini. Pro Max Mini? The Pro Max Mini. This is the all-new Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max Ultra Mini, not Pro 5G Fold. SE. 5G. <laughs> Um, hey, I got I got a good topic we could talk about. Go for it. Go for it. Op- Apple, re- Apple removing the display. Like, okay. you ever see them so, doing that? For those of y'all who don't know, um, so you know how Apple normally does colors, right? Like, um, last year it was the iPhone 13 in green. This year, or before that, it was the iPhone 12 in like a light purple. Well, this year they launched the iPhone 14 in yellow, but the thing is they didn't, they like, removed the display, basically. 
so there's like no screen at all on the phone and like there's kind of a bit of backlash because people feel like um the screen was kind of like necessary to use it but apple says they're just they just had the courage to remove it because someone had to and uh that's one of the big things that's going on right that's now. really that's that's like that's like really not cool for apple like I mean, apple if you're watching this bring back the display please yeah tim apple like give it back i could see their point of view though like when i'm using my phone i don't really need the screen you're mainly using the buttons and stuff and of course we know next year we're not going to get the buttons but yeah um when apple removed the screen it was kind of uh i don't know like like really not cool we we asked for a design overhaul and i guess that's what we got right yeah pretty much so we've been pretty really, much tonight. Pretty much, yeah. So let's talk about the iPhone 15 Pro. Meet the new volume buttons, same as old volume buttons. So who could have guessed that the volume buttons would be the biggest rumor to track for iPhone 15 Pro cycle? So basically, Joe, you know how, like, remember when you had that iPhone SE and you would press the home button, <clears throat> and it wasn't a real button; it was like a semiconductive, like, capacitive touch button. Yeah, it wasn't, like, a real physical button. Yeah. Well, that's what everyone is saying the iPhone 15 is going to be like, but for the power button and volume buttons. I just don't see that doing too well. Yeah. And, like, they're also supposed to be, like, turning the up and down volume buttons into, like, one rocker. And then people are saying that there's going to be, like, gestures. So, like, to turn up the volume, you could, like, swipe your thumb up on the volume rockers. That just feels so awkward, though. When you could just press it. But. (coughs) I don't know. Yeah, it just. Yeah, that would would just not be, like. That would not be really good. One of the big things is, like, once your phone goes dead. and the button doesn't work, how do you turn your phone back on? Like, once it's powered off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that does well, not seem like a very good idea. I, I I agree. I think the physical buttons are the best way to go. But what they're saying but, is that there's going to be some ultra you know low power be... mode for the buttons. So, like, whenever it does get powered off, yeah, there's going to yeah, be, like, a secondary yeah, battery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes. But you know what would be uh, insane? What? If Apple switched the USB and just scrapped Lightning as a whole. To USB C, correct? Yeah, USB C. I think they're doing that on all models. That is, uh, yeah, I think everyone's pretty sure that they are. Yeah, they're bringing USB C to the iPhone in 2023, later in September. To hopefully all models, and but it would be pretty. But weird. what about Go ahead. what about what about all the people who still have models that have lightning cord? They just don't. How well, how is that gonna work? A cord comes that in the box. Not... Cable comes in the box. I know, but what about all the other people who bought iPhones before they did and have the lightning cord? Then on they the can phone? use the lightning cable. I guess, but like, it's just not, it's just not the best move. I mean, they kind of have to, to comply with the EU regulation requiring all electronic devices sold in the EU to use USB-C if they're capable of charging via a port. So, Apple was faced with two options, they could either go completely portless, that way they could say, hey, you said device is capable of charging with a port and we don't have a port so we don't have to comply or they could just do what the EU wants and go with USB-C which I feel like that's a superior port and that was the right decision to bring it to the iPhone 15 now let's talk about the Super Mario Bros movie oh yeah 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 I remember a few episodes back, we watched the trailer, and we, we were talking about how good the renders are, 
and we actually just went and watched it in theaters together. Um, Jack Black was Bowser, Chris Pratt was was Mario, so I feel like Nintendo was pretty focused on just, like, hiring big names in order to, uh, make their movie sell well, and I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, but, yeah. Yeah.